it was the big on-stage moment. Starting February 1st, Wi-Fi will be free on Delta. Absolutely. Fast, irrespective of what class you fly in. If you're up front, you're in coach. My question is, why did you do this? A lot of reasons. First and foremost, it's an underlying belief that connectivity is what we do. And it's no secret that while you can connect anywhere you are on this planet, once you get into the sky, you lose connectivity. And it's very hard to maintain a quality reception, even if you're paying for it. But this is no, about no. competitive advantage, though, against some of your peers this and is, your competitors. Th this is about giving our customers something that they've been asking for and wondering about for years, why don't they have it? And we also know that there's no place in the world you pay for Wi-Fi except on an airplane, and that we needed to fix that. You and I were here in 2020, and a lot of this is coming full circle, it seems like. Yeah as part of your big tech plan. You are gonna to have to make further investments, but talk us through those investments, the in-cabin tech that you're gonna improve, and is there a dollar value that you can put around all of this? Well, we've invested a bill, over a billion dollars the last few years just to bring the free Wi-Fi to our customers. With Viasat. That, with Viasat that we're launching, because it's not just the, the satellites that you pay for, but it's also the equipment, the routers, the downtime on planes, so it's been a pretty significant technology investment right. in and of its own right. Secondly, we're going to be bringing more than just Wi-Fi. We're going to be, we also introduced Delta Sync, which is going to be a broader entertainment experiential cha channel that when you're on board Delta, we have exclusive partnerships with T-Mobile and American Express and Paramount Plus to bring quality experience that you can only get on Delta aircraft and not on the ground. The other thing that we did uh, over the last several years, which again, we talked about three years ago at CES, was the airport and ground experience. We have opened the new LAX facility, the new LaGuardia facility, the new Salt Lake City facility, the new Seattle facility ahead of schedule on all those projects because we put the pedal down during COVID. Once we realized that we were going to be stable and make it through, we accelerated the push to get this work done. And so we're actually a couple steps ahead of where I even thought three years ago would be, interestingly. And, and Ed, this is uh, Romain in New York. I, I want to get your thoughts here on some of the broader travel trends here, particularly with the rebound that I think a lot of investors are, been, are looking for when it comes to business travel. Well, we are in a quiet period at the moment, so I can't speak too much about what we'll be releasing our results for the fourth quarter next week. But as you saw from the holiday traffic, it was very strong. The demand was, was quite healthy. And our outlook continues to be, as I mentioned in December, uh, that this is not going to be a short-term phenomenon, that there is literally hundreds of billions of dollars of foregone air travel over the last several years in and out of the U.S. that customers want to continue to reclaim. So I think you're going to see a strong year ahead for Delta and I think the entire airline uh, industry. Ed, I get we're in a quiet period, but can we talk about IT budget? Mm -hmm. Because it, it kind of strikes me that Delta is basically a data company as well, right? Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, the airline industry is behind the curve when it comes to moving things, to data to the cloud, investing in its IT infrastructure. Do you, do you think that's a fair assessment? And, and what is your commitment to kind of investing in IT data management? Well, I, I can't really speak as an industry. I, I think others can speak for their own technology. I can speak for Delta, what we sure. are. We are in the midst of doing exactly what you said. In fact, that was another thing we did during the pandemic. We signed a deal with Amazon uh, AWS where we are halfway through moving virtually our entire mainframe technology base to the cloud. We're not done yet. We have about half the apps up and running and over the Is there next... a deadline for it or? There's no deadline for it, but it, it was something that was the right thing to do. Uh, we knew for a while that we needed, because of the speed, the agility, the efficiency, the cost, and the resiliency of going to the cloud is so much better than what you operate on-prem. The problem always is, is that when you're doing it and running a highly sophisticated 24-7 operation, there's a lot of risk and takes you a lot of time. Again, another thing that we did during the pandemic, we said this is the time to move. And uh, with our partners at AWS as well as IBM, we're, uh, we're on that journey. We'll be done with it by 24. Ed, how are you doing on staffing right now, both in terms of uh, on your planes at the airport, but also at the corporate level? 
I'm sorry, couldn't, couldn't make uh, Remain was asking you about staffing, how you're doing both on the planes themselves but also at the corporate level. Staffing, we're in good shape. Uh, we've hired 30,000 people over the last two years. And uh, pilots were in, in good shape. I mean, the, the issue isn't staffing in terms of numbers. It's very much about getting the experience. Because when we went through, uh, for example, the holiday period with a very difficult weather, I mean, that was the first big, nasty weather event that a lot of our people saw you know, for the first time. So they're, they're getting the experience on the ground, on the job. Uh, pilots need to be trained, and there's a cue to getting them. We have a fixed number of simulators and devices that right. we can train on. Uh, so we're, we're in good shape. Our goal, we're about 90% restored relative to 19 is how we closed out the year. Our goal is by this summer to be 100%. So we're on that path. Can I actually zero in on Remain's question and go to specific talent, tech talent? You know, we're at a tech conference, layoffs from Amazon, 18,000. Um, the airline industry has always been a bit insular, particularly at the upper echelons, right? People move from one company to another or they move internally. When you're here at CES, how important is it for you to put yourselves in the shop window for that tech talent, software talent? And, and what did you think about my upper echelons comment? Is that fair? Well, I, uh, yeah, I was here three years ago at CES. We were together then, and I'm back today. And I can't tell you how many people have stopped me over the last couple of days and thanked me for being here, say how great it is to have, have a, an industry leader, an airline uh, sure. here, because we are a big tech company, no question about it. Uh, the sophistication and the complexity of what we deal with is, is significant. Uh, we are not having a problem recruiting talent. In fact, you know, while the other guys may be reducing, we're hiring. Now, we, we were, you know, during the pandemic, we needed to reduce. We didn't let anybody go, but we were, we were kind of stable and we kind of kept our, our budget down a bit. But we're now, we're building, we're excited about where we're headed. Uh, we got some big technology projects, just the Wi-Fi alone. Yes. Is, is that personalization that's gonna come? The data capabilities that we're gonna create from, you know, we're gonna have so many new members that are gonna be joining our SkyMiles account. Because we, about half of the travelers on board Delta flights are now members of our SkyMiles program, which will be another way for us to be able to understand them and serve them better when they're with us. Well, I guess my question then is about specific expertise. And you think about the C-suite, you know, is as the leader of this company, do you ever look across industries, software, uh, devices, businesses, and say, you know what, I want to bring a big hitter from the world of technology to help me achieve no. this? We have big hitters. No. We have big hitters at Delta. We, we have, I think, I, listen, I've been around the airline industry for 25 years. I had previous, uh, previous you know, wor worked at PepsiCo and Pricewaterhouse. I will tell you the technology leadership at Delta is one of the finest leadership groups anywhere that I've seen. Hey. And, I, and I interact with all technology companies. Companies. I find that very, very interesting because I hear the opposite from industries like the automotive industry where they're looking at big tech for some inspiration. We've got to ask you about 2023. You know, 2020 was weird. You and I were here just before the pandemic hit North America. Right. You've had that two-year pandemic period. You know, Remain asked about business travel. What is your Ed Bastian outlook for 2023 about the global economy, about travel? You know, I'm not an economist. I can tell you about again about our industry. I think it's going to be a very strong, very strong outlook for the year. We had our Capital Markets Day last month in New York, and I showed a chart for the industry that shows the relationship between air travel in our country and U.S. GDP. And for years, going back 40 years, every year, about 1.4 percent of the economic output of this country was invested in consumer air travel. And it broke a little bit 9-11. It broke a little bit, but it came right back. It broke a little bit in the recession, came right back. It broke significantly caused by the pandemic the last three years. There's $300 billion of foregone travel that we know that the demand was there for that couldn't be, couldn't be fulfilled right. because of the pandemic. And so this notion that there's revenge travel or pent up demand that may be quenched or, or run out over some period of time, I don't see that happening at all. I think it's going to be a very, very strong year for travel in the U.S. And by the way, I think for hospitality, I think for serv the service economy is going to continue to grow. One final tech question for me, if I may. I know Viasat is your key partner, but there are interesting developments in the tech side when it comes to connectivity on planes, SpaceX, for example, and Starlink. Are you looking to invest and just make that speed faster, new partnerships, are those things possible? We've, uh, I've, I've said in the past, we, we understand the SpaceX, uh, the Starlink technology, we've, we've, we've tested it, we, we, we understand it, it's not ready for prime time, I'll be you honest. You don't think here. it's ready, yeah. Uh, not. 
by February 1st, like, like Viasat Fair is, enough. right? And so as technology continues to expand and people continue to develop in this space, there will be new opportunities for us, but I'm very happy with Viasat and they're going to do a great job for Delta.